Hello, happy Thursday, everyone, and welcome to Something to Talk About Live. My name is Jamie Hinkle. My pronouns are she and her, and I'm the Learning and Inclusion Manager at PFLAG National. Uh, just like every week, if you have any comments that you'd like to share, please feel free to do so in whatever platform that you are on. There are going to be some folks from the team uh, monitoring that throughout. Um, and again, just like every other every week, um, I'm going to bring Jean Marie Nevetta uh, to get us started with today's conversation. Jamie Hinkle. It's been a while. It has been a while. I mean, we see each other normally, but not like this. So it's really fun that it's our last show together. That's right. It's the last show of the year. And we had a lot of fun in the green room because really excellent guests today. Oh, yes. We have like the best guests ever today. And you're going to be coming back to help me in a little while. That's um, right. We're talking holidays and I can't wait to hear about your traditions because we've got some good stuff going on. Awesome. Thanks, Hinkle. Hey, everybody. My name is Jean Marie Nevetta. My pronouns are she and Aya. Um, and I'm the Director of Learning and Inclusion at PFLAG National. Every single week, we get together to talk about something related to LGBTQ issues. And this week, we are talking about the holidays. It's our last show of the year. Um, and we want to talk about how to bring a little queer holiday joy into your life. So um, first of all, if you would like to grab this week's discussion article and questions, if you'd like to be part of the discussion or leave one on your own, Visit us at straightforequality.org slash discussion series, and you can grab the article, which came from LGBTQ Nation, um, written by Emily Bashforth, and it was called 11 Ways to Spark Queer Joy This Holiday Season. The article acknowledges that the holidays can be a tough time for everybody, but for people who are LGBTQ+, it can be really tricky if you don't have support of your family and allies. And so to talk about why that is so important, um, we have PFLAG, uh, PFLAG National's board president, Kathy Godwin joining us for the first part of today's show. Hi, Jean Marie. Hey, Kathy. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for inviting me. Well, thank uh, you. I know I know it's busy, so I so appreciate you coming on to talk about holidays with us, especially in the middle of your baking. Yes, exactly. In the middle of my baking. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, you know, gift giving, travel, families, friends, financial strain. Sometimes we do have to mention COVID. Um, sometimes there's unrealistic expectations about what the holidays are going to be like that sometimes not even a Hallmark movie can fix, even though they can fix almost everything. So sometimes families need a little bit more help. So Kathy, as PFLAG mom extraordinaire, can you talk about some of the ways that you think that families can help um, people who are supportive of their LGBTQ um, loved ones um, really celebrate the holidays with a little bit of a queer twist? So uh, I started to think about this a little bit because as my family has gotten older, um, those traditions that we did when we were younger have uh, changed. And part of that is having a family that has a queer member in it. But the other part is just having adults around me all the time. <laughs> uh, but some things are tried and true that are special in our family. Um, and then the new things that have evolved. So I'll share both. Uh, tried and true is um, my heritage is Portuguese. Um, and so we always make Portuguese bread during the holidays and we give it as gifts and we eat it for breakfast for the entire month of December. And it's, it's uh, a sweet uh, breakfast bread. Um, and the other tradition that has transcended through time since my uh, son Andy has been probably a teenager is that he and I watch White Christmas. Uh, that is a tradition that stays with us. We will stay up for the midnight show if that's the only time it is. Uh, of course, now we always have a glass of wine. Uh, and that has become our tradition. Um, and how have things changed for us a little bit? And, and, and I think what's changed is respecting that I have adults in the house. Um, and some have their own house and some are coming in and out. Uh, and everybody's idea of a large family gathering doesn't feel the same. And so being respectful of what people, what's important to them and being able to um, spend some quality time, but also give everybody a break on uh, time spent together has been something that as a mom uh, was a little bit hard to adjust to at first. Uh, because uh, us moms always like to have everybody around us. <laughs> and, and that's not really fair. Um, and so we have uh, made some changes over the years. And, and uh, this year, we will be uh, with one family uh, traveling uh, out of the state of California to the state of Washington. And then we will be FaceTiming with our other kid who will be in the state of Utah 
um, celebrating with friends of, of his. Uh, and so we are scheduling all that. And then um, just to make the whole season extend, uh, in January, we're all going to um, a small, it is COVID, small family wedding uh, in Cabo, private home. All of us will be together, all the adults, but everybody will be able to have their own space. Uh, they'll be able to take a run. They'll be able to go get a margarita down the street if they want. Uh, and uh, and the, uh, the grand, can we have two granddaughters? They'll be able to just go sit in the pool. <laughs> so, <laughs> so traditions um, are fun to remember, uh, but I've learned that sometimes they have to be altered. Yeah, yeah, they do. I was just thinking about people could run to the margarita and that would be like multitasking if they yeah. really wanted to. Yeah, which might exactly. just happen. You never know. Or just, you know, just run into the water and say you swam a little. <laughs> I counted. I got wet. It's good enough. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, you know, we are so lucky. You know, so many of us at PFLAG and so many of us who are connected to PFLAG families are so lucky because we do have. Um, supportive family, whether it is the family we were born into or the family that we chose. Um, what are some of the ways that you would suggest to people who maybe don't have families who are supportive um, and feel are feeling really isolated this um, season? Some of the ways that they can take care of themselves. Well, I think what's important is to, for me, is to really, if I encounter those people, to invite them to share with me what was special about their holiday when they were growing up and, and how it has evolved and whether it is um, comfortable for me to invite them to join us. Because that's not always the answer. Um, the, the answer for, from my perspective is to actually ask them questions and let them open up and have time to talk about their life and how they see it now and what they, what they if they could do anything, what would they want to do? And sometimes those are the funnest stories. Whether or not they can really do it, it's fun just to share it. It's sort of like planning that trip that you don't know you're ever going to go on, right? Um, and so I, I think that it's important to um, acknowledge that not everybody has a family they can go to. Or, as I've recently learned, they may have immediate family that's supportive, but not the extended family. So now they won't be able to go see all those people in a place that's really comfortable and how to, as a family, um, talk about that and make that experience so that they still enjoy their holiday, and, but aren't forced to be uncomfortable and, and frankly, uh, don't feel uh, affirmed in any way. Yeah, I, I, I love that. I really never even thought about actually engaging people to find out what do you want? Because I mean, I think a lot of us right away go to, oh, come to my house, have dinner with us, celebrate with us. And that isn't what everybody necessarily wants or needs. I, I, I thank you for bringing up that point. It really got my brain going. So this, of course, perfectly cues up conversation about chosen family. Um, so um, where did you first hear this term? And what does it mean to you as somebody who's so very much engaged um, in allyship to the LGBTQ community? Um, chosen family first came up for me early on when I got involved in PFLAG because um, I found myself uh, immersed in Salt Lake City, as, as many of you know. Um, that's where my son came out and where we were living. And PFLAG, uh, Salt Lake City has a very large community of LGBTQ people. Uh, who are very visible, who are very active, and they embraced coming to PFLAG and sharing their stories of how family evolved for them, whether they came out as a teenager or they had been married and had several children uh, and came out, whether they came out in college, and who they found was their family. And often it was each other, um, where they might, you know, stop by for at someone's house uh, to say hi and you know, spend an hour or something, but then they would plan their own party and they would have a gathering. And for them, it was, that was the special holiday. Um, so chosen family was a term I learned uh, at that point. Uh, and, you know, when I look back at my, my own family history, my, both my parents were raised by single parents and often found themselves in situations because uh, their immediate family was so small uh, or so, so uh, protected. So uh, chosen family had not been used that way, but I looked back and thought, you know, really my parents had a lot of that too. 
Yeah. And so who, may I ask who's who are some of those members of your chosen family? Do you sort of um, bring in people in addition to sort of the biological and family by marriage? Um, you know, because of our um, moving around a lot in Utah, uh, where we had so many, there was often uh, some family member who had uh, no one in town who we would have over for dinner, or maybe maybe we would just have them over uh, a couple of days before um, and and talk about uh, what they were going to do and maybe things they remembered that were special and what they were doing for themselves. Like, what are you doing for yourself this year? And often they would say, well, I'm going to see my kid and we're going to go on a trip, you know, instead of decorating the house and doing all those things. Um, and also acknowledging that a lot, I had several friends that didn't celebrate Christmas. Yes. Uh, they were celebrating different holidays. So it was very important to acknowledge and ask questions. And, and that's true here also uh, in Berkeley, where I have uh, many friends in my neighborhood who don't celebrate Christmas. So we talk about, so what's your family holiday, family tradition during this time of the year, period, you know? Um, so I think it's, again, that conversation and acknowledgement that not everybody does the same thing. And that's actually kind of fun. I know. I, I actually think it is. And I think um, the more we've gotten into talking about chosen family and for those of us who have built it, it has brought so many new traditions into our mm -hmm. lives that maybe we didn't grow up with. I feel so very lucky that that has become part of my existence. So I have um, one last question for you, um, which is what is the thing you are most looking forward to this holiday? Hmm. I, think <laughs> <laughs> I didn't plan on this one. I know. Uh, that's okay. I think um, at the, the last couple of weeks have been pretty busy uh, because I have a tendency to overextend myself. Those who know me know that's a, a, a kind of a negative trait uh, or an exhausting trait. And I think I'm looking for the holiday. Uh, what I'm looking forward is a little time to just sit back and observe what's going on and just feel comfortable in the space and not feel like I have to rush to to do something else or connect with someone who uh, I haven't connected with a while. Cause I've spent a, a fair amount of time in December doing that. Oh my gosh, I've missed you. I haven't seen you. Um, so uh, I think just spending time and just absorbing the, the space and whatever transfer transpose uh, happens is okay. Right. If the tree falls over, well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be rough, but no one's going to die. It's just the tree. Exactly. Correct. Yeah, uh, no one wants to appreciate that. The hitting pause. Like, I think we get so into mm -hmm. what we need to get done. We sometimes forget about those moments that we're never, ever going to get back unless we stop and pay attention. Um, well, thank you so much, Kathy, for taking a few minutes out of the baking process, because I know you're <laughs> in the middle of it. I will let you return to kneading bread now. Um, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us. And thank you for everything that you do with PFLAG. We always appreciate you. Well, thank you for inviting me. And and, and happy, happy to everybody who's here. And enjoy the, the end of the year. And, and let's all pray for a safer and healthier uh, 2022. Amen to that one. Thank you so much, Kathy. We'll see you thank in the you. new year. Thank you. Well, everybody, now we have our other guests today. So we asked the PFLAG staff if they would like to join us and a whole bunch of people definitely were into it because we wanted to talk about our holiday traditions because today's article was about how you can create your own queer holiday traditions. And certainly we represent um, people who are queer as well as people who are allies and family members. And so I'm wondering if Jamie can come back on because Jamie, I want to start with you and then we can start bringing some of our friends in. So Miss Hankel, tell me about um, what your favorite holiday tradition is. Well, you know, I couldn't pick just one. Um, and, you know, I am somebody, I still celebrate the, the holidays with my, my family, with my parents and my siblings and their spouses and, and what have you. But I couldn't pick just one tradition. Um, the ones that did come to mind and sort of my top three, if you will, um, probably 10 or 15 years ago, my family started making homemade pizza on Christmas Eve. And we try all sorts of different recipes and it sort of evolved over time. I feel like one of my love languages is making food for people. And so <laughs> making pizza on Christmas Eve is, is a really fun tradition for me. My brother now has this really fancy pizza oven. It really has become a part of our holiday tradition. Um, the second thing that came to mind is um, that my mom uh, still buys toys for her children. 
Um, so I am 36. My sister literally turned 34 today and my brother is 32 and we each get a toy from Santa <laughs> on Christmas um, because my, my mom was felt really sad that she didn't have kids to buy toys for for, for, a, for a while. And then the third thing I'm going to call out is um, for my family, Christmas is sort of a three day affair because we do Christmas Eve celebrations, we do Christmas Day celebrations, and my dad's birthday is the day after Christmas. So it just, that that's the third thing that I think really stands out to me for my family is it's not just one thing, it's all three things. I love that. I, I, I really love that. And I love that um, these traditions have continued, even though you're no longer kids anymore, the fact that you still get a toy from Santa, there's something incredibly endearing about that. And yeah. it sort of reminds you um, of how, how much fun I think this season can be if we try to make it that way. And if we are privileged enough to be able to celebrate um, with other people. Um, so we have a whole bunch of our friends with us today. And I was wondering if maybe you can bring the first person on. Um, I yeah. see you looking for our first guest. Yeah, I think maybe let's, let's invite Diego to join us first. Diego. Hi there. Hello. So Diego, um, obviously we know exactly who you are, but for people who may not have had the pleasure yet, please do tell people who you are and what you do. And then we are dying to know about what your favorite holiday traditions are. Who I am, Diego Sanchez. My pronouns are he and L. I'm the director of advocacy policy and partnerships at PFLAG National. And I do whatever Jean Marie tells me to do. <laughs> And I've known her longer than her own wife, so I've been doing it longer. <laughs> so my my traditions for Christmas honestly go deep into the heart of just thinking of chosen as well as, as native family, adopted family, and reaching in to, to talk to cousins that I haven't seen or seeing my brother and his kids and his wife. Uh, it always involves one thing that's really important, which is tamales. Tamales are central to holidays. And the thing that, that you know, you were asking earlier of Kathy, like, what can you do that, that you know, to, to make it friendly, let people know they are invited. And then as y'all talked about, invite them or, or, join, or have them tell you what they want. But some of us don't always know that we are invited and that we're welcomed. And even if we say no, it's a warm thing. I so appreciate that. And also you can invite me over for tamales anytime. I'll bring my coquito. It will be the oh, best party in the entire yes, world. Yes. <laughs> we know how to party. Yes. Um, I love the point that you made. And I think you're right. Just extending that invitation, even if people don't say yes, just to know that they were wanted. I think that means so much, especially from those of us who have various times have been estranged from family. Um, so Feliz Navidad, Abuelo. Okay. And I will see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. Who's up next with us, Hankel? I think that maybe we'll invite Mackenzie to join us. Oh, we're, we're all together again. It's my whole team all on one screen for once. <laughs> this never happens. This literally never happens to us anymore. So Mackenzie, this is your big opportunity to introduce yourself, discuss your BICON status, of course, um, and then um, tell us a little bit about your um, holiday, favorite holiday tradition. Absolutely. So for those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Mackenzie Hart. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm the learning and inclusion coordinator here at PFLAG. So I also have to do whatever Jean Marie tells me to, but that's like by employment law. Um, and I, what I, a few things that I'm excited about for the holidays, I, I get to go home and see my family. This year I have a new cat that I adopted in August, so she's going to get to come back to Massachusetts with me. Uh, and beyond getting to see family, I like leaving the city for, I live in New York. I like leaving the city for the holidays because there's nowhere I want to be less on New Year's Eve than New York City, the <laughs> one time of year that I don't want to be here. Um, but one holiday tradition that I really enjoy that I've kind of developed over the past couple of years and is actually a little bit before now, like we did this a few weeks ago, is doing Friendsgiving meals instead of Thanksgiving meals. Um, Sometimes it's harder to go home for Thanksgiving. Schedules don't line up. For me, I don't eat meat, so the turkey is not, not you know, super exciting to me. And the holiday itself, I think, has a very problematic history. But there's something to be said about being thankful for the people around you and the people you love. And so taking some time to do a Friendsgiving around this time of year is something that 
has kind of naturally fallen into place that we haven't always necessarily planned it out. But several friends and I will meet up and each bring a different dish. Sometimes we'll follow Thanksgiving food, you know, mashed potatoes, squash. Sometimes we'll do very interesting things. One time I made a fake tuna sashimi and brought it um, and it turned out really good. So that's just something that I really like. And that's as as someone who has a small immediate family that I love and I do get to see over the holidays, I really love adding to it with my friend group as well. I love that. I just, I love that. Um, and thank you so much, Mackenzie. Um, and thank you for doing what I say to do, which I don't even know that I'm that bossy, but apparently I am. We're learning something about me today. <laughs> um, thank you so much. And I will Thanks. see you very soon. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Thank you. Who's up next, Hankel? Uh, I think we'll go to Brooke. Hello, Brooke. Brooke. Hello, Jean Marie. Hello, Brooke. Please don't tell people you do what I say because you don't. I know you don't. I don't do what you say, but maybe I should. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, Brooke, tell us about your holiday tradition. Uh, well, thank you, everyone. I'm, I'm Brooke Smith. I'm our Chief Information Senior Manager at PFLAG, and I use she, her pronouns. Um, and I was going to talk about, um, so when I was little, uh, my family, we used to all just like pile in the car and my mom and dad and my sister, and we would just go on these like Christmas light parade. Like we would just go in search of Christmas lights, like through neighborhoods. I mean, it was on Christmas Eve, Christmas night, pretty much all of December. Uh, we would even, I'm from Kansas City, and if you know anything about Kansas City, uh, the plaza lights are lit every year on Thanksgiving night, but the night before at 2.30 in the morning, they do a test run. And so my dad would wake us up and take <laughs> us in the middle of the night to go and look at lights. So that was like an old tradition. Um, and now I have a one and a half year old son. And every night I pick him up from daycare, we walk to and from daycare. And it is like another parade of lights. And it is so exciting because we walk by these lights with Santa waving and then like a blow up dinosaur. And, you know, I'm just like, ooh, ooh. And he's like, ooh, ooh. You know? <laughs> and it's just, I mean, it's, it's exciting because I know I'm carrying on that tradition and we're just going to have this, you know, extension of a family just looking around at lights all season long. I love the fact that you're doing this with your doppelganger because he really does look exactly <laughs> like you. It's actually a little bit We have a lot of similar uh, gestures too. A lot of the ooh, ooh. It's true. It's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you, Brooke. Um, and hopefully we will see each other again sometime soon. Uh, maybe, maybe in the flesh, hopefully maybe soon. Maybe in the flesh once again right. sometime soon. Thank you, thank Brooke. You. All right, Jamie, who's up? I'm going wild and out of the StreamYard order and calling on Jamel now. Excellent. I just knew that I was going to be called. Like, I legitimately <laughs> just felt it in my spirit. I was ready. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Jamel. <laughs> Jamel, <laughs> since you are so ready, do introduce yourself and please educate us about your traditions. Yeah, so my name is Jamel Dooley and I'm the Chapter Services Coordinator for People Like National and my pronouns are he, him, and his. Uh, my... Uh, tradition revolves around movies. So every year, <laughs> I have a collection of movies that I have to watch. Uh, I usually will start off with Home Alone and then okay. I transition into Home Alone 2. We ignore the third one. We don't pay attention to her. It didn't happen. She, 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 she did not happen. Uh, then I have to watch Die Hard because Die Hard is definitely a Christmas movie. Thank you. <laughs> and then I kind of have some variation. Sometimes I watch Jingle All the Way, which is absurd, but really, really fun. But I do that every year. Excellent, excellent. I have to ask because it is my favorite Christmas movie. Where are you on Love Actually? Pro con. Oh, Jamal. It's a boot for me. Sorry. Oh, Jamal. <laughs> later. Oh so boy. I have, an, I have an old supervisor that used to be obsessed with that, and we used to do like a staff like get together, and she made us watch it every year, and I would. Just <laughs> I would just make Trauma. me a drink and sit there and I would just get through it. <laughs> it's Deep trauma. Deep I'm trauma. Trying. <laughs> well, thank you. Even though you and I are not on the same page, but we do agree on Die Hard as a Christmas movie, which it definitely is. Definitely. Thank you so much, Jamel, and have a great holiday. Happy holidays. Bye, y'all. Jamie, who's up? I'm gonna I'm gonna call on Charlie next. 
Hello, Charlie. Hi, everyone. Um, thanks so much for having me. Uh, my name is Charlie. My pronouns are they, them, and I'm the chapter engagement coordinator for the Midwest region. Um, so my holiday tradition is that um, when I was a kid, every year my parents would buy me a Christmas ornament. And so I've got all of the years I've been alive worth of Christmas ornaments. And there's probably like six or seven of them from like when I was a baby and I was like baby's first Christmas, right? So I've got like six or seven baby's first Christmas ornaments. And so I have all these ornaments that my mom sent me in the mail um, when I was like 19. And so my partner and I take our Christmas ornaments out of our respective boxes and put them on the Christmas tree and just kind of reflect on like who we were when we that when we were those people and like where, where we've come from and where we're going and all that sort of stuff. And I think it's just really soft and tender to see all of these things in particular, like the ones that my parents got me when I was like a little kid and thinking about like how I was interested in certain things so that I could be interested in them with my dad and all that sort of stuff. Very soft, um, love Christmas ornaments, love Christmas. Uh, so do I, and I'm so with you on the ornaments. They're such good memories. Um, my brother actually sent me my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles one, and it's one of my favorite ones to put on the tree because obviously I'm a total grown up. Um, but thank you so much, Charlie. I love that story. I appreciate it. I hope you have a great holiday um, with your partner and with your family. Happy holidays. Thank you. Who's up next? Sean. Hi, Hello, Sean. How are you? Uh, we're having fun here. So introduce yourself as and tell, uh, tell us about your holiday. And I'm just going to hope for your cat to run by. <laughs> we'll, hope, we'll cross our fingers. So okay. my name is Sean Connors. Uh, my pronouns are he, him, his. And I'm the chapter engagement manager here at B-Flag National. Um, no cat sightings yet, but our holiday traditions that we love the most in our house that I've been doing since I was a kid is inviting people to our house who don't we don't think have a place to go or like right now my partner and I live in a building where there are a lot of senior citizens who don't have a lot of folks to come visit them so we bring them cookies and invite them to our house and just try and spread a little bit of chaotic Christmas joy around <laughs> I like the chaotic Christmas joy that totally rocks my world thank you so much Sean and I'm gonna yeah. like ask your cat to actually be a guest next year on the show mm -hmm. maybe like your cat and my cat and Hankel's cat it'll be a party I Thanks. think it'll be a cat party thanks Sean bye and one more person. That's right. Last but not least, we have Jamie Curtis. Hello. It's good to be here. Hi, Jamie. <laughs> Hi. You even love the tree and everything, Curtis. I'm so excited. Yeah, I'd like to say I just put it up for this, but it has been for a few weeks. So tell us first who you are for those who do not yet know you, and finally, what your tradition is. I'm Jamie Curtis. I'm the director of chapter engagement. I use she, her pronouns. So my tradition is related to my tree, um, a sort of like Charlie um, ornaments are really important to me. And a tradition that we had when I was growing up that I still do as an adult is um, whenever I go on vacation or go anywhere, I try and buy a new ornament. Um, so this year I went with some friends to Lancaster, Pennsylvania, and I bought this like quilted uh, acorn ornament. Um, and it's just really, as uh, sort of Charlie was talking about, you know, as I go through and put everything up every year, um, it's such a, a, an experience to hold them in my hand and have the memories of when I got them. Um, and I also have a lot of ornaments that friends have bought me. And so those are meaningful. And, and so it's a good tradition because it comes from you know, my family growing up, but I think it's a great thing for those of us with big chosen families as well, that a lot of the ornaments represent um, my friends and my chosen family and, and have such strong memories attached to them. I love that. Thank you so much, Jamie. Um, I think that's such a good one. I think a lot of us are resonating with the ornament thing or some sort of holiday commemorative item. Thank you so much and have a great holiday. Thank you. All right, Hankel, I guess it's time to close this one out. Wait, I can tell you about my tradition. That's right. What, I'm going to do it, and then I have to do a quick thank you. So my biggest tradition is every single year we watch, I know Jamel's going to cringe when I say this, Love Actually. It is my favorite Christmas movie. As soon as the tree is up and everything is put out, that is the first thing that we queue up, and it is um, just such a treat, and I've been doing it for so many years. My brother does it too, even though we're not in the same place. So it kind of feels like a family tradition to us. And with that, Jamie, um, I actually have something um, I've planned and I don't know if it's going to work and it's based on love, actually. So here we go. One second. I have my Christmas music and I have to do my thank yous to everybody. So in the spirit of love, actually, 
A little, little closer to the camera. A little closer to the camera. Hang on. I finally did it. It actually worked and nothing crashed and I didn't mess up the slides. So um, have a great holiday, everybody. Please be safe. We are looking forward to seeing you back here on January 6th when we come back for our new season. Um, have a very safe holiday. Um, we wrap up the same way every single week, reminding you to run fast, laugh hard, and most of all, be kind. Please, 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 if you haven't gotten vaccinated, do that. Go get your booster if you haven't done it yet. And we are really, really looking forward to seeing everybody very soon. Um, if you need any help, please remember pflag.org slash find will get you to your closest chapter. Have a great holiday, everybody. We'll see you next year.